Hi, welcome to this brand new playlist. We are covering AWS Solution Architect Professional Real Certification Questions. This is the part one. Do subscribe to this channel and hit the like button for more such informative contents. This channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications, primarily Azure, AWS, and GCP. Let's jump into the questions. This is the first question. Please pause the video here to read it carefully and come back. You have CloudFormation being utilized here to launch EC2 instances. The basic use of CloudFormation is to enable infrastructure as code. That means you will have uh, certain lines of code which can be r run to create infrastructures. That is to create servers like EC2 instances. You can also create IAM users, you can launch databases and so on. So what is the pain point? The pain point here is EC2 has some difficulties and you want to check these logs. Where are these logs stored? That is the question. Where are these logs stored? You have four options. So the first thing is what are we doing? We are trying to troubleshoot cloud formation. And whenever you want to troubleshoot, you always have to go through the logs. I'll directly point you to our documentation which clearly explains you how to troubleshoot cloud formation, especially for EC2. So let's scroll to the EC2 issue. We have to view cloud init and CFN logs. So this is the path. This is precisely what our question is talking about. So my answer is C, I cannot substantiate why A, B and D are wrong because this is not a logic question. This is something the way this product is built. Let's move to the next question. Please pause this video here and return back once you're done after reading it. So you have your EC2 instance and you have SQS. And this blue one is your Dynamo TV. What does EC2 instance do is it takes whatever is there in the SQS queue. It takes that and it is updating entries in here. So it takes the data from here and then it sends it here to update the database. And there is not one EC2 instance, there is a fleet of ECS instances, sorry, not EC2. Now, what's happening is, what is the pain point? This is not getting updated. When and what happens because of that, the queue here keeps growing. So this guy here keeps sending data, keeps sending data, keeps sending data. And if this guy does not receive the data, does not receive the data, for example, Amazon, there is a delivery guy, he keeps delivering to multiple places. But if your apartments are shut and you are not there, your packages start accumulating. So SQS, the queue becomes big now. And what is happening is when you are trying to update the table, you always see 400 failures in CloudWatch logs. So let's look at what is 400. See, 400 error is a throttling exception error. Okay. Now the documentation says usually this happens because of throttling issue. What it means is if you want to resolve it, you can span your API calls over certain time periods rather than you know making entire call at once. You span it across a short period of time. But if you see here, it clearly says there is no throttling. So our investigation falls flat. See, if it is saying the pipeline, the water is flowing from here till here and from here till here, there is an issue here at this point in time. There is something is wrong here. And that wrong may be that this guy is not able to drink all the water. But this then the question says there is no throttling. That means this guy can drink all the water. What can be the another problem is this pipeline is faulty. Maybe there is access issue or this pipeline is faulty. So let's go ahead and see here. What I think here is, see out of these four options, the first one says the ECS service was deleted. ECS is a fully managed, highly secure, reliable, scalable container service, okay? So if you have some web application, three tier web application, front end, middle layer, and database layers, you can use ECS for deployment. See in ECS, there is always, we have to define the IAM rules for tasks because that provides strategy to manage the credentials of your applications. I don't think ECS service got deleted because otherwise you will not get this error. The, the service itself got stopped. So this is the wrong answer. The second one says ECS configuration does not contain an auto scaling group. You do not require an auto scaling group here. The problem is not the bottleneck is not here. Okay. 
the problem is this piece is not working so even if you auto scale ECS it is not going to solve your problem by auto scaling means if this guy is not able to handle the work if there is one guy and, and he's making like hundred dosas a day and uh, if you give him capacity like you give him an assistant who can sp like sp spring in 50 dosas in a day that is not required here that is not a problem here the problem is here at this piece so it says either the task role was modified okay or it says the ecs instance task execution iam role was modified see if iam role is modified you will clearly get a security authorization issue authentication issue this is not what you're getting here okay you're getting something like 400 that means there is something to do with api calls the api calls are not being made and why it is not being made is because your task role got modified because task execution rule it grants ecs container permissions to make api calls on your behalf and since this itself got modified and impacted the calls from here till here is not being made and that is the root cause of this problem and hence this is my final answer let's look at question three please pause this video here and come back after reading this carefully so basically there is an s3 glacier service glacier is a part of s3 it is a storage class of s3 it is very low in cost usually it is used to store data archives and long-term backups you are constructing a vault there the reason we create vaults is to store the archive so that it is immutable that means once it is stored from a compliance perspective nobody can change it nobody can update your file nobody can change the data now you want to send notifications how you can do that the first one says glacier cannot support this from aws console which is wrong glacier does support it the second one says use archival upload complete so the notification does not happen once the archival is uploaded it does not happen at that time it doesn't even happen once the vault upload job is complete it doesn't happen that time it happens when your vault inventory retrieval job completes see there are two steps whenever we try to configure the notifications there are two steps initiate the retrieval jobs after the job completes download the job report and then you proceed with the configuration for notifications so you got to wait after the job completes and which job not the upload job but the inventory retrieval job see this is the job that runs inventory retrieval and once it completes you get this status field and the status code then you can go ahead with your configuring the sns topic sns is used always remember any emails is sent through sns in the aws world any emails is sent through sns in the aws world so this is how it the architecture and etc looks like and this is something which is used across different services like Lambda, SQS, and like Redshift, S3 buckets, and so on. So this is my final answer. Please subscribe to my channel. It takes a lot of effort to put this analysis and every attempt is made to make this as accurate as possible. So please hit the like button and the subscribe button that is taken as an appreciation of my hard work. This brings us to the end of part one there are so many playlists on this channel hundreds of videos refer these clear your concepts and clear your certification exams successfully see you in the next part